um, fighting someone like Felder. Uh, you know, Felder's got some lethal uh, kicks and knees, so I mean, I think Felder's got more momentum. I think Felder's, you know, got momentum, even even though he that loss he took recently against Barboza. I mean, I don't think too much happened in that fight to you know knock his confidence I, from from his reaction afterwards. It, it it seemed like he thought he won the fight. So. Yeah, um, that, that's a good point. Actually. Yeah, he does, a, he does go with more momentum after that loss because it was such a close fight, and it was his his first loss. Um, but certainly looked good in it, you know. Um, and a striking battle with a guy like Barbosa, um, you know, there's there's no shame in coming off the, the 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 sort of losing end of that. You could end up like Terry Etam, and he certainly didn't. Um, but let's move on to uh, the ne- the next fight, which is um, well, she's the darling of the UFC strawweight division. We could call her that, Paige Van Zant, and uh, she's up against uh, Alex Chambers. Uh, Kevin, I'll start with yourself on this one. Um, your pick on this: Who have you got, Paige versus Alex? A strawweight possibly contender fight? I'm definitely going with 12 gauge Paige. I mean, uh, you know, they're going to protect. She's, you know, she's such a good looking girl, which matters a lot in the marketing of uh, women's MMA. It's a sad truth, but it's sure. definitely a truth. Yeah. Um, I think this is a good matchup for her. I think uh, it's another fight where she can showcase her skills. We just saw her ragdoll uh, and just beat the car out of, uh, out of uh, fa- uh, Herring in the last outing. So, I mean, I think they're going to protect her for a while, market her up, bring her up. This is a good matchup for her and for the UFC and their brand. And, you know, eventually get her in there with Jan Dreschik. And, uh, you know, it's probably not going to end well after that, but I'm definitely taking Van Zandt in this one. And what about yourself, Adri? We've got Paige Van Zandt, Alex Chambers. Um, is, there, is there any way for Alex Chambers to to maybe, I don't know, I don't I wouldn't say get the fight to the ground because it didn't work out too well on, a, on an opponent for the last fight, but um, do something different to get this young up-and-comer uh, keep her down. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of of, of this fight. I, I think um, the UFC is giving is giving fans an uh, an easy fight on paper. Even though you know we cannot really predict what what would happen. The fight is a fight. Um, yeah, I'm I'm looking at the straw week rankings right now, and fans is up there, number seven, a top ten a top ten fighter, and uh, worse Alex Chambers um, nowhere. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, Fanzen is Fanzen is a is a star that they want to rise. Um, they they, they want to develop for, for to be the superstar in the very near future. So I'm really not a big fan of this matchup. It's kind of what you call the the slow build and and uh, pro wrestling. You know, it's almost like they've got this. Like I said, at the, t- at the top of it, she's the darling of the UFC strawweight division. And uh, like you you said, Kevin, it's um, it certainly matters her image appeal. Um, crosses a lot more borders than fight fans. Fad, what about yourself? How, how do you see this one going down? Paige Van Zant versus uh, Alex Chambers. Who, who are you picking? Who have you got in this one? Um, I'm not going to bluff. I'm not up on the women's MMA as I could be. Uh, <laughs> earlier on, I, uh, I meant to say Raquel Pennington and said Jessica Rye, and uh, I wasn't even aware that Holly Holm had, had, had fought since the, the Pennington fight. So uh, I'm going to have to go with Paige Van Zant because I'm aware of her. I know of her, but I don't know um, Alex Chambers, so <laughs> that's about as good as it gets for me. <laughs> Fantastic. I love the honesty, <laughs> sir. Well, let's quickly move on then uh, to the light heavyweight contest. Two big light heavyweights in, in Jimmy Manua and uh, Rumble Johnson. Um, Kevin, I'll start with you. How, how do you see this one going down? Is it, a, is it a KO victory for one or the other? Well, man, it's... You know, it's hard. It's hard to tell. I mean, I've had uh, Manoa on the winning side when he's came on the losing side, and, and I've thought uh, Johnson was going to win, especially in the last fight with Cormier. You know, after looking so good uh, against Gustafson, and then looking so bad against Cormier. I mean, Cormier made him look just as bad as he made Gustafson look. So yeah. this is a toss-up, man. Anytime when you get higher in these weights, the volatility goes way through the roof. I'm of course a betting man. I'm probably going to stay away from this one. But you know, gun to the head, and I got to choose somebody. I'm going with Johnson. I feel like he took him so long in his career to find out where he fit, and he fits well at the 205 weight. Yeah. Uh, Manawa has not faced the uh, opposition that that uh, Johnson has faced, and so you got to lean towards the experience of Johnson in this fight, and also the explosiveness in his hands. I mean, he can. Uh, he's got he's got more power in, the, in his hands than 95 percent of the people in the division, and so. With that being said, that he can change it, change the night just with one punch. 
Oh, um, obviously, Manoa can too, but I think he's got the sharper stand-up skills, and I'm going to have to leave with Rumble on this one. And what about yourself, Audrey? What's your pick going into this light heavyweight contest? I'm very, very excited for this one. Uh, yeah, well, this is not a, a fight I would bet on, just like uh, you guys said. Um, yeah, Jimmy Manoa's uh, only loss is, again, a tough contender, which is uh, Alexander Gustafsson. Anthony Johnson with that hand, with that power in his hand, um, a KO can come anytime. Uh, I can I can say the same about Jimmy Manua. So uh, I, I have nothing to say except for don't blink, don't blink when you see this fight. Don't blink, I like it. <laughs> Fad, what about yourself? We've got Rumble and uh, Manua. Who are you picking in this one? Uh, got to go with Rumble, as Kevin said. Got to go with the uh, with the more established fighter. Who's uh, who's fought the the much better opponents in the past? Um, while both of them, you know, are are you know big hitters, um, Rumble's also got the uh, pocket, so that's another big advantage for him in this fight. Um, of course, there is there is the side to this fight that is you know you know the lottery sort of sort of side of it, where you know one punch can and will change a fight. Um, I kind of feel for, for um, Manua. In uh, I mean, they're not they're not giving him any uh, sort of leeway. Uh, the UFC when it comes to opponents, uh, it just kind of took a massive jump really when he fought um, Gustafsson. Um, he lost that pretty convincingly, and uh, who does he get next? Like Ronald Johnson, the guy <laughs> who just fought for the title. Uh, he's, he's almost on the Liotta Machida level of. Uh, <laughs> of uh, tough opponents but um, yeah you've got to go for a rumble well let's move on uh, to the, the, the cool main event and uh, we've got two oh, heavyweight veterans is veterans even the word at this point I don't know 10 years in the making and it's uh, Andre Arlovsky and Frank Mir um, we all know about these guys they, they really don't need any introduction um, Adri I'll start with yourself who have you got? Is it Frank Mir or, the, or is it the Pitbull? They're both pretty much on this renaissance run. Who are you picking in this one? <laughs> I, I like you, your choice of word, renaissance <laughs> run. Um, yeah. I, um, it's really hard to, 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 to pick on this one. Frank Mir, sometimes you can expect great things from him. Sometimes he's just, uh, no. Uh, his fight against... Uh, his, his second fight against... Brock Lesnar was uh, was disappointing for me as his fan, and he went on a four loss uh, losing streak. Um, his last two wins was 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 great. Uh, a huge uh, two huge KOs against two big op- uh, uh, contenders, two big opponents. Mm. But I don't know. I just had a gut feeling that that Mir takes this one. Wow! Don't ask why. I just had a gut feeling that Mir takes this one. That would be, that would be quite well. I don't know if it would be. I was going to, about to say that would be a shock, but given Frank Mir's run recently, I don't. I don't think anything's shocking anymore. Fred, what's your thoughts? Andre Arlovsky versus Frank Mir. Who have you got in this one? Um, I'm kind of thinking. I'm kind of thinking Arlovsky, and one of the main reasons for, for that is. Is recently I've I keep seeing Frank Mir talking about his boxing and uh, how his boxing is developing so much. Um, after his last couple of fights as well, I think I think he does believe that. Um, the only problem is, particularly against Duffy, um, you know, it, Frank Mir's boxing might be um, might be improving, but you know when they start. Waiting on each other, you know. Technique went out. The thing Mir is asking for trouble. If he doesn't fight to his, uh, you know, is 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 very dangerous for Mir in that regard. One thought, and that's um, when Arlovsky, you know, his, his original run in the UFC, um, when when he was fighting, you know, it seemed like he was fighting uh, Tim Sylvia every other week for the title. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, you know that that era, that heavyweight era in the UFC is, uh, you know, he's not rated at all, and uh, he's, he's kind of looked at as a dark time quality-wise for the heavyweight division. But 
I think if Arlovsky, you know, he, he, he keeps winning and I don't know, he's incredibly he's he's looking like he's 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 approaching a title shot and if if the you know, if the incredible was to happen and he was to become a champion again then or or even fight for a title at this time, I think we'd have to possibly, you know, have a little think and possibly revise what how we look back at that at that division at the time. Yeah, though I think there'll be a bit of revisionist history for sure. Kevin, who are you picking in this one? Heavyweight contest, co main event, Arlovsky versus Mir. Well, I'm going to have to agree uh, and disagree with uh, both the last panelists. You know, obviously, you know, with Frank Mir talking about his boxing skills, this isn't Todd Duffy he's getting in there with. This is Andre Arlovsky. His uh, boxing style is tailor made for MMA. He keeps his chin down. He gets his shoulders squared up, throws those short punches. Uh, a lot of people forget how good he was looking in the uh, Fedor fight before he jumped in there uh, with that ill advised uh, jump and knee attempt. <laughs> you know, Arlovsky gets way better boxing as far as for MMA goes than, uh, than Frank Mir. Well, Frank Mir, and I'll be the first to admit that I'm not a big Frank Mir guy. I never have been. But I was actually very disappointed that they went ahead and went with uh, Kane versus Verdum uh, two for the for the title shot. I thought Arlovsky had done enough to get into the title. I thought he has a name recognition with the hardcore fans being such a um, you know an old veteran and old ve- you know two veterans is definitely the way to put this, my friend. Uh, you know this is going to be. This is going to be a good matchup for sure. I see Arlovsky winning the stand-up game. People uh, forget a lot that uh, Arlovsky has some good skills on the ground too. Yeah. So, sure. uh, with all that being said, I'm looking for Arlovsky to win here. And uh, you know, I don't know when the last time Frank Mir strung three wins together was. It's not going to be this uh, next weekend, though. I can tell you that. Wow. And uh, I'm I'm actually probably going to bet on this fight. I try to stay away from betting on the heavyweights, but uh, I'm all over Arlovsky if I can get a decent line on this. So Arlovsky all the way. I'm I'm taking him by a knockout. I'm going I'm to call it the second round knockout. Wow, interesting. Very interesting. Oh, just on the back of that, uh, that was a good point, actually. Earlier we were talking about you know, the disappointment of the announcement of uh, Rousey versus Holly Holm. Um, Adri, I'll come to you first on this one uh, since Kevin brought it up. What was your thoughts on... Um, Making the Kane rematch, uh, did you think Kane, okay, he was the champion for so long, but he had been injured for, and inactive for quite a while. Um, what, what did you think of the announcement of uh, Verdum Kane 2? Um, I think I think they, ha- they have to do it. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a fair thing for, for, for the UFC to, to give Kane a, a rematch against Verdum because um, when, when Kane was... was uh, Defeated by 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 Sigano back in UFC on Fox, the first UFC on Fox card, they almost immediately gave him a rematch after only after one match against Antonio Silva, um, and it was a good fight. It was a very good fight. Um, is it good for business? I think so. Is it a is it a, a fight that the fans want to see? I also think so. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a good call to. To, to make a rematch between Verdum and, and, and Kane. That's interesting. What about yourself? Uh, what did you think? Were you are you excited or are you disappointed? Feelings about um, Kane Velasquez Verdum too? Uh, no, not disappointed at all. Pretty excited, in fact. Uh, um, I agree with Adri. You know, I think it's something they they, they had to do. Oh. And the really big thing is that there's a you know there's there's a massive element of doubt mm-hmm. you know over Verdum's win. You know. People want to see C level Kane versus C level Kane. Uh, I love how this has become a thing. C level <laughs> Kane, but it's I guess yeah. it's true, right? There's no denying well, the, doubt's the fact there. that the altitude played a factor. Yeah, the, the 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 doubt is there, you know. So with any with any rematch, you need you need the element of doubt, and, and the UFC have more than got that with this rematch. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I can't wait to see that to see that. Yeah, it because, should be awesome. Because Kane surely will, you know, will be a different fighter. In theory, yes, yeah, I think I, I, I've got to agree that um, you know there's so much um, unclarity or what, what's the word I'm trying to look for. It's, it's inconclusive basically because of the, yeah. the attitude factor, and yeah. Um, yeah, it would be nice to see. I guess I'll have to see as well. Sea level Kane competing against for Doom and just see as as this this is the real Kane. So let's see it sort of play out. Well, let's move on to the the the, the main event of this card. Uh, the main event for the UFC 
flyweight title. I was about to channel my inner Bruce Buffer there, but I won't do it. Um,